Traveling from the sky and bringing love across all continents, we are here to explore this important port of the South China Maritime Silk Road as one of the four famous ancient towns in China. Foshan has always been an important source of goods on the Silk Road. In fact, the origin of the ancient Maritime Silk Road is even earlier than the land Silk Road. Due to the difficulties of inland transportation at the time, people had been actively developing maritime trade. Starting from the southeast coast, the route went through the South China Sea and the Strait of Malacca, crossed the Indian Ocean and entered the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea, reaching as far as Western Asia and the east coast of Africa. Other than trade, the Maritime Silk Road was also an important route for cultural communication. People in Foshan are very open-minded. They're willing to absorb cultures from all over the world. At the same time, their own characteristics are not lost. The place has always been well known for its food. The fishermen are very busy in the early morning. It rained heavily overnight. They have to wait until the early morning to start collecting and laying nets. They raise the fish so that they can be sold at the fish stalls and markets. The fish ponds are rented out at regular intervals. Therefore, every harvest is of great importance. As a fertile land with abundant fish and rice since ancient times, Shinda abounds with freshwater pond fish. Fish farming in dike ponds is one of the features of the Pearl River Delta. There are many low-lying areas in this region where water tends to accumulate in case of heavy rains. People here were clever to turn the low-lying areas into ponds to raise fish, such as grass carp, tilapia, dace, and more. With numerous nets woven into water, big fish are splashing and glistening. The quality of the water in the ponds, the feedstuff, the unique climate, the environment in the Pearl River Delta, and the quality of soil determine the great taste of fish. People in Shinda are very aware of this. Today's harvest is relatively rich. The fishermen are finally relieved. Locals have more than 200 ways to cook the fish. These farmed pond fish will also be exported, of which 90% will go to Hong Kong and Macau. When it comes to the most fresh tasting dish, there is one local Shunda dish that comes to mind which will challenge any chef. It is a cold dish and also the first dish of a meal, Shunda sashimi. To make the fish tasty and refreshing, the fish must be kept in a mountain spring for a few days, which helps get rid of sand and reduce the fat content and enables chefs to observe whether the fish is up to par or not. With concentration and outstanding knife skills, chefs will remove the red part very carefully after filleting, and finally they can get this precious slice of fish. We mainly use the mulberry knife to cut the fish. The chef must be very familiar with the mulberry knife. Chefs like us who specialize in sashimi preparation need years of experience to be precise in every cut. Chefs in Shunda have great knife skills. We will check if the fish is qualified after killing it. A fish slice must be like a cicada's wings. An ideal slice will be crystal clear. No blood should seep out when eaten. As thin as a cicada's wing and with a crystal clear appearance, the slices of fish are laid on the ice to keep cool. The sweetness of this freshwater fish spreads on the tongue the moment it enters the mouth. The cold taste makes it stay refreshing after chewing. Over 10 kinds of ingredients and side dishes accentuate the flavor of the sashimi. People just can't stop eating it. The locals in Foshan love food and they eat all kinds of food. Wandering on the street, you can't even tell which dish is their favorite. No matter what, food from the river is one of the favorites in Shunda. Local people often cook with freshwater fish.
Apart from cooking, Foshan is also famous for its handicrafts. The Maritime Silk Road is also known as the Road of Ceramics and the Road of Spices. And Guangdong is the province with the longest history, the most ports, and the broadest routes on the Maritime Silk Road. It also has the greatest number of relics from these sailing routes. Ceramics, ironware, and silk in Foshan were the main exports on the ancient Maritime Silk Road. As an important member of the trade system, the sailing route is not the most outstanding character. Instead, it is the exquisite handicrafts. The Namfeng ancient kiln was built during the Wangli period of the Ming Dynasty. Building began in 1506 and has now been around for more than 500 years. The Namfeng ancient kiln was mainly used to produce ceramics, mainly ceramic cups and pots with Xingwang characteristics. We call them the three pots in one bowl. Besides, the early building ceramics in Xiwan, including tiles, tile ridges, and floor tiles, were all made in long kilns, just like the Namfeng ancient kiln. Every piece of handmade ceramic is a unique artwork. Like cooking, ceramics carried the good wishes of the ceramic craftsmen. Ceramics did not have an ornamental value at first. They were more like daily use items. People in Foshan are self-sufficient. They infuse the way of cooking into every piece of ceramic. By doing so, the look and flavor of the dishes were influenced. Chinese ceramics have a history of tens of thousands of years, and ceramics in the Xiwan region are known to be one of the pinnacles of China's ceramic industry. For hundreds of years, Foshan ceramics have been transported to Southeast Asia and countries in Europe and Latin America. According to the ancient records, Xiwan ceramics were popular in Guangdong, Guangxi, and other regions overseas. They said that pots and tiles from Xiwan are the best in the world. These show the importance of Xiwan ceramics in the history of the Maritime Silk Road in China. The heyday of Xiwan Long Kiln was during the Ming and Qing dynasties. At that time, there were 107 kilns on 99 hills in the Xingwan region. On large and small hills back then, the ceramics produced for daily usage were sold overseas. Some were even sold in Southeast Asia, through Dongpeng River and the Pearl River estuary. Except for products sold overseas, the ceramic production techniques and products in Xingwang had been exported during the Qing Dynasty and the Republic of the China period. Records even say that some ceramic producers would go to Vietnam with their boss and build ceramic factories there. It can't be surmised from this research that the development of ceramics in Vietnam has benefited a lot from the ceramic techniques in Xiwang. It was actually our people who brought our techniques to Vietnam. Starting from bowls, plates, and tiles, Xiwang ceramics in Foshan meet both people's daily needs and spiritual needs. The nature of civilian kilns was free in production and marketing and became the source of vitality of Xiwan ceramics.